Hello, uh, my name is Rex Finfkeld. I'm in uh, Denver, Colorado in the US. And um, in 2011, I had a near-death experience. Um, basically, I fell um, 26 feet, basically right around nine meters. And it's all in the police report, first responder reports, my medical records, everything I'm gonna tell you is all in my records. Um, I, I hit the concrete head first. And I was in a coma for, for five days of cracked vertebrae. Um, I think about eight ribs. I broke my pelvis in four places, destroyed my elbow, um, torn rotator cuff, and the list goes on. Um, so the, the medically speaking, it's, it's hard to say, I guess, how long my heart officially stopped because what I understand while I was in the coma, especially the first couple of days, I went into a crash, a respiratory crash, and I just crashed a, a number of different times. So my speculation is, and based on what I've seen through the, my records and talking with my doctors, is that if my heart stopped, it always stops maybe for a few seconds at a time. I mean, um, I understand that the crashes were bad enough that, you know, according to one of my doctors who was part of the trauma unit, um, Apparently, I, there were a couple of times they really thought they had lost me. They thought, you know, that, that I was gone and, and uh, they're ready to call it. And somehow I would just keep coming back. But, um, yeah, I don't, like I said, uh, you know, all, so as far as like the, the actual near death experience itself, you know, people sometimes ask me, well, how long did it last? You know, when did it happen? They don't know. You know, my NDE is seems to be a little different than a lot of the way a lot, a lot of people describe their NDEs. And I understand, you know, I mean, we're all different people. So we all have different kinds of experiences. The divine reveals itself um, in, in a lot of different ways to all of us. Um, I think, you know, depending on the kind of experience that we're having in our life and, and depending on maybe the kind of person we are, or, you know, maybe where we are in, in, our, in our soul being, you know, that those are all long conversations unto itself. Basically, my, my near-death experience wasn't necessarily me traveling anywhere per se and, and and it was much more esoteric than most people describe an nde uh, i really didn't have any sense of my body i didn't have any sense of the person that is rex necessarily i was still me i was still very cognizant and conscious i was completely aware in fact if anything i was more lucid and, and, and even I guess mindful than than any moment even in my in my waking life if you will in, in this physical life you know being Rex the person that I am here in those moments what I experienced was basically in fact if, if anything it was maybe just a moment I mean I, it's hard to say but in a moment it was like all of eternity but the way I like to describe it is like this imagine like all of space whatever the expanse of the universe or even a multiverse may really be all at once. Imagine past, present, and future all at once time being completely timeless. Just, just you know, space, time, just all at once. And with that in mind, think about the potential for multiple realities, parallel universes, a space of just pure probability and possibility, all of this all at once. And in that, think about infinite dimensions, all at one time, all at once, all in that moment. That's where I was. But in that moment, and I often describe it like this as well, where it's, it was all of the dark, all of the light, and everything in between, all at once. But underlying all of that, and, and I know a lot of end of years talk about this, and this is one of the most common things that somebody who's had you know, a, a true NDE is that feeling of love. And I don't even know if I'm going to call it a feeling. Um, I, I do spoken word performances. I'm a musician. Um, I write and produce music and such. You know, one of those, my one of my post NDE discoveries. But and I, and I and I basically talk about how it just it it, it it's just kind of opened up a door to this like just this, this this deeper understanding. And 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 I and I say it like this: I wasn't really experiencing love as I was love. I was not alive per se i was life itself i was not a collection of thoughts i literally was the mind the thought the imagination that gives rise to creation itself for a moment i was the source divine being called i mean whatever terminology you want to use for that but maybe even use the term god but for a moment i was one with source i was that source and 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 and
having that experience, I come to realize this is what we all are. I didn't have this experience because I'm different from anybody else or anything like that. I, I mean, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. I mean, just I, I don't want to like you know to downplay myself, but there's nothing necessarily exceptional or special about me that I'm going to say that makes me different. It doesn't this is this is what we all are at our core. And 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 in, in saying that, I didn't. It's people talk about did you leave your body and whatnot. In a matter of speaking, like I said, I had no sense of my body, so I don't know that I left anything. And in those moments, there literally was a feeling just knowing. Um, there wasn't really a conversation that took place as much as it was maybe more like a thought process. I often like that, that, that expression, movement at the speed of thought. So if there was movement, it was just literally through thought. And, and in, the, in those moments in that knowing, like I said, it just felt like a moment, but in that moment, as I just described, it was like all of eternity was the all of everything. You know, sometimes people talk about the nothing and then the void. And to me, this idea of a nothing and the void is the, the essence of everything that is, all potential possible realities and, and every soul and every being, every thought, every idea, every feeling, it, it, it's all there. You know, some people call it, you know, in science, they might use the term unified field. You know, to feel the potential of reality. I think of spirituality, I think that that's the, the same term that applies to that would be the Akasha. And I prefer to use the term the, the Akashic field. I don't necessarily think of it in terms of the Akashic records because that would suggest it's all in the past. It's all something that's that's behind us. To me, these, this field, as I say, is timeless. I mean, everything is in that field. Every potential reality is in that field. Even the idea of multiple versions of ourselves and different timelines existing or coexisting if you will right along with us um so the, for, for for in terms of my near-death experience in a very simple context that that's that's basically what it was for me and it's one of those things where you know sometimes i get asked um did you experience like you know my, my mother passed in 1988 where it was really really close um i've loved ones that of course that have passed did you get to see any of them did you see angels did you see this or that or, or anything along those lines. And it's like, you know, in a manner of speaking, I did because like I say, the experience was the all of everything. Um, but at the same time, what happened was, is I didn't go somewhere and come back and I'm not, and, and somehow I lost that. When I when, when this happened, I may be back here in my human form as, as this person, but but the proverbial lights are still on, the veil's still lifted. I mean, all of that, is, I'm still experiencing, everything I just described, I'm still experiencing it. And now it's like, as I come back, I'm having these experiences what people might consider spirit beings. Um, I'm very aware that my mother is with me. I'm very aware that my loved ones are with me. Um, and here, you know, in, in a Native American philosophy, um, and I've been through, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much an eclectic. I'm, I don't consider myself necessarily a religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. And I'm very comfortable to go to church, go to synagogue, go to mosque, sit in a, in a sweat lodge of the Native American rituals here, you know, uh, in my area here, um, or any, any number of this different, you know, religious or, or ritualistic, ceremonial kind of kind of uh, celebrations, if you will, or or, um, or or happenings, whatever you want to call it. But but the, but, but in, in, in Native American philosophy out here, one of the biggest things that they talk about, especially in what we call sweat lodge, um, is, is all my relations. Um, I, I don't want to mispronounce this, but in Lakota Sioux, I think it's Batakyasin is the expression, but it means all my relations. It's, it's, it's the connection to not just, you know, the, the, those, those loved ones that have passed in your lifetime, but your ancestors as well. You know, those that have lived centuries ago or millennia ago, and, and all of them bringing wisdom, insight, bringing love, and helping to guide you on this path. And now that I've had this near-death experience, this is what I experience on the, on a daily basis. This, this is something that has become kind of part of my norm, if you will, you know, um, including what we might consider angel beings. I, I have friendships, as I prefer to call them. I and mean, yes, these are guides and, and, and you know, we, I, I certainly reach out to them, you know, when I have ideas, thoughts, or even maybe questions, or maybe just when I'm hurting or sad about something. But at the same time, even in my little human form, I do my best to reach out and, and, and be there for them as well. It's, it's as I say, it's it kind of becomes more of a like a mutual thing. You know, it's it's, it's like I, 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 I it's a relationship. It's like like any friendship we might have here, you know, with our with our human friends or maybe our, our animal friends or what have you, or or, for, or maybe a friendship with Mother Earth. 
you know, I look at it like more of a, you know, that kind of a relationship where it's a sharing that takes place between me and these beings, if, if you will. So it sounds kind of maybe a little bit crazy and I wouldn't necessarily share this with, you know, just anybody and just in any certain situation because not everybody really understands this and, and anyone that doesn't, it certainly can sound kind of crazy. But you know, my reality is no longer just this brick and mortar reality, but I feel like it's a two, not, I, would, I don't know if reality is the right word for it, but the connection to, to true consciousness. You know, in Hinduism, there's an expression that they say, it's all consciousness as the source being. So, I mean, I mean, these experiences that I'm having, you know, with other beings happened when I came back. They didn't happen during the NDE. If anything, the NDE opened up that door so that I can have these experiences now. Experiencing all potential realities all at once. I was experiencing everything, infinity, you know, uh, eternity all at once. That, that oh. literally, I mean, it just, it was all this entire potential existence was all right there before me. Consciousness, source, pure, divine, loving consciousness was just, that's exactly what I experienced, but all of this information all at once. I mean, everything was there, everything. You were there. I mean, everything was there. Break, I mean, I, it's hard to break it down because um, all it did was open up doors. So now that I have an, this incredible visual acuity now that I never had before, it allows me to do music, but also allows me to understand the nature of existence itself. I mean, I do presentations about it. I talk a little bit about it in my book. Um, so it's, it's just opened up the door where I have these visions and these epiphanies as a result of it. A lot of things, you know, that's some of the things that changed for me is that, I mean, I came back, you know, I, I mean, I've never, I've been a DJ in the past. I, I, I you know, make sure that I can make people dance. I can mix music, but that's not the same as actually composing, writing, and then of course, mixing and mastering, doing the production as well, because I've never had any actual formal training in that. I mean, I've got over 40 pieces of music I've written just the past few years, and I don't know what key anything's in because I just envisioned the music in my mind. There's a piece of software called Ableton that I write my music on, and then for some reason, I'm not an engineer, never had training for that either, but the frequencies, I see the frequencies in my mind, and I'm able to do mixing and mastering so the pieces actually start to sound good. You know, get to a point where I can eventually release these tracks and are good enough that I have musicians and vocalists and, and other producers that have been doing it their entire lives that are incredibly talented that like working with me. You know, that's why I'm in the, you know, the projects that I'm in. So it's kind of crazy. Plus, I'm a percussionist now. Uh, I sing, I play a little guitar, and that's all stuff that's basically happened since the NDE. And then on top of that, I've got these understandings about like gravity's relationship to the unified field and to a multiverse. And in the process, I think I'm explaining what dark energy is. It's the NDE, you know, uh, I can't remember anything. You know, things that were strengths for me before, physiologically speaking, I had an impeccable memory, almost a photographic memory before, had an incredible directional sense. Um, I could multitask, I, I had fast, I was a fast thinker. And now I'm none of those things. I can't, I can only do one thing. At Somehow my visual acuity has just opened up like crazy. I mean, ever since the NDE, that visual part of my brain, um, I can visualize with incredible detail and just incredible accuracy. And, and yes, and then on top of all of that, you know, my empathy, my intuition, my sensitivities, my feelings are also acutely increased. I mean, it's, it's exponentially so much stronger. I feel things, I sense things like I never have before. That's another thing that's completely different is that my, my sensitivities, I've always been a sensitive person and, and I consider myself, I always thought of myself as being reasonably empathic. I could feel with other people and I've always been a compassionate person, um, but that's all things too you know just even my capacity to love has just become so profound and so strong like i've never imagined it before especially like uh, my intuition did i get feelings about things and they're, and they're usually pretty accurate you know people sometimes will ask me rex what are you thinking about this what are you feeling what's coming through for you and i'll tell them and you know and, and most of the time it's right it's most of the time it's, it's spot on and you know just even insights about people around me i mean I, I even going to a grocery store i have to kind of prepare myself because i'm taking in every one of these energies of all the people around me whatever they're going through in their day you know maybe they maybe they they had a, somebody in their life that just passed away they're going through something really heavy maybe they're a beautiful wonderful person but they might be carrying heavy feelings i'll feel that even from a stranger even when i don't mean to so i mean i have to you know kind of like balance myself out to be able to even just go through being crowds of people because my sensitivities and my empathy is just off the hook now my intuition is just completely off the hook now so that's another thing that's completely different since my nde it's just those sensitivities my feelings are just i feel with such intensity like i've never imagined i could I basically you know took it upon myself given the circumstances you know, of everything you know being completely different now to reinvent myself and reinvent my whole life. So I'm basically doing now in my 50s, you know, what a lot of us do in our 20s and 30s and what I've already done in my life, you know, done done once in terms of building a life prior to my NDE. So um, 
I, I my goal now is I want to experience things I've never experienced before, and I'm also wanting to be something because I, I didn't feel like I was this this person before, but I want to be my best person. I want to be somebody who can actually make a difference in the world. I want to be know when, when I take my last breath that I really have done all the things that I really want to do, and not just in terms of my personal self, you know, certain experiences and you know dreams that I have for my life, but also the, an impact I want to have on the people around me and an impact I hope to have on the whole world by the time I die. They say we find a way to come through that. I mean, and it's when you're depressed, everything is, I mean, I've been depressed, I know. I mean, you don't believe in anything. There's, you know, dep dep basically depression breeds hopelessness. So when you're depressed, you oftentimes don't see a way through something and depression as a result leaves the person stuck in whatever place they're in, that very difficult, hard, um, sad, angry, whatever, you know, whatever's going on there, place that just kind of locks them in because they're not seeing a way through. Um, and, and all I can say about that is, I mean, again, it depends on the individual, depending on who I'm talking to, it might depend on what I'm actually going to say to them. but. There's, there is always a way through, and, and that starts with just letting yourself believe that those possibilities exist. If you're already telling yourself and you're convincing yourself there is no possibility, there is no chance, well, you know, the universe is very accommodating in that way, and then, then the perception will be, and the circumstances will be that there is no chance. But you've got to start with allowing yourself to see that possibility exists. And allowing yourself with that to say, you know what, I believe those possibilities exist. And you know what, I'm going to make the decision to find those answers. I'm going to figure out what it is I need to do. What is, What are my circumstances right now? What's really going on? And what can I really do about this? And, and, and know that there are options. Maybe initially, you may not like the options that are presented to you, but you've got to start. So if there's one thing I've learned in this life is that just start with baby steps. Because if you, after a while, you look back and you realize those baby steps are starting to add up. And when you, when you see that, then all of a sudden you might find a burst of inspiration and go, you know what? I think I do have this. I think I can totally do this. And there is a way through this. And then you do, you find your way through and you can pull yourself out of these very dark, very bleak places of depression, sadness, hurt, hardship, anger, all of that, because I've been through it. Um, and and there's, always, there's always a way through. It's just, it's just allowing yourself to start with the belief that, that, is, that, that anything is possible, including in good ways. My book is called My Experiment with Gravity. It's actually a, um, a reference to the fall because I never referred to my falling as an accident. And, you know, when people, especially the first couple of years, would, you know, would ask me how I was doing, it seemed very anticlimactic to just say, how was it since your fall? So the joke, the running joke became, hey, Rex, how you been doing since your experiment with gravity? And, um, you know, come back with, yeah, hey, gravity works great. And, uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing however I'm doing at that moment. So the book was called My Experiment with Gravity, seemed the appropriate title. And you can find it on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback form. And basically, the book is not just about the near-death experience. I mean, it definitely talk about that because that's the inspiration for the book. The book is actually a spiritual, it's an autobiographical spiritual self-help book that really embraces and explores the transformation that has taken place from my life before to my life since.